So in this video, I wanna discuss some of the language that was included in the ATF's new rule on frames and receivers and how it could impact bans on rifles like the AR-15. So let's talk about this. But real quick before I jump to this video, if you think a ban on rifles like AR-15s is unconstitutional, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I wanna give a shout out to one of the main supporters of this channel, which is USCCA. Through your membership, you get training, education, and self-defense liability protection. So if you carry a firearm, I highly recommend you take a look into USCCA and I'll put a link to them down in the detail section. So I guess in the intro, in this video, I wanna talk about some language that was included in the ATF's new rule on frames and receivers and how that might impact current lawsuits that are going on, which are challenging various bans on so-called assault weapons. Also, I wanna address whether or not this was a huge blunder by the ATF in incorporating this language into their new rule. Now, this video is coming in reaction to a handful of you viewers who sent me a video from another content creator who was pointing out some of this language in the ATF's new rule on frames and receivers, which this language admitted that the AR-15 is one of the most popular and commonly possessed firearms in the US. Now, if you aren't aware and you are coming to this stuff for the first time, last week, the ATF dropped a final rule which changed the regulatory definition of frames and receivers, and it changes various other things as well in this new rule. But the primary focus and goal of the new rule was to target and regulate so-called ghost guns. The new rule made it so that 80% kits would need to be serialized before they're ever sold. And also it required that whenever you go and purchase one of these 80% or kits, you would have to have a background check run on you. This new rule on frames and receivers on its own is very concerning because it seeks to arbitrarily change definitions in a way that the ATF can now regulate home-built firearms. On page five of the rule, the ATF stated, in the past few years, some courts have treated the regulatory definition of firearm frame or receiver as inflexible when applied to the lower portion of the AR-15 type rifle, one of the most popular firearms in the United States. If it did not stick out to you immediately, the ATF in that language just admitted that the AR-15 is one of the most popular firearms in the US. Now, you may be asking yourself at this point, well, who cares? We knew that average gun owners knew that the AR-15 is one of the most popular rifles and firearms out on the market. So why does the ATF including that language even matter? Well, it matters because the ATF, one of the largest Second Amendment violators out there, um, just essentially conceded a major part of a constitutional analysis. This concession could be the death blow to any state which bans so-called assault weapons, which are essentially just simply bans on ARs and similar type of semi-automatic center fire rifles. To understand what's going on, we have to look at the Supreme Court's decision in Heller. In Heller, the late great Justice Scalia outlined how courts are supposed to analyze restrictions that implicate the Second Amendment. Heller specifically addressed what type of weapons the Second Amendment actually protects. It protects arms that are typically possessed by law-abiding citizens for lawful purposes. In other words, the sorts of weapons protected are those in common use at the time. In the founding era, when called for militia service, able-bodied men were expected to appear bearing arms supplied by themselves and of the kind in common use at the time. Therefore, the traditional militia was formed from a pool of men bringing arms in common use at the time for lawful purposes like self-defense. Therefore, as Justice Scalia stated, the pertinent Second Amendment inquiry is whether the arms are commonly possessed by law-abiding citizens for lawful purposes today. If it is, then that arm is protected from government restrictions under the Second Amendment, and even more so under Heller, any categorical ban, i.e. an outright ban on that protected arm is automatically unconstitutional and should be struck down. Well, as the ATF just admitted in this new rule, the AR-15 is one of the most common firearms possessed by law-abiding Americans today and any categorical ban or outright ban on that type of arm under Heller would be automatically invalid. That should be the entire constitutional test on AR-15 bans, and that should resolve any issue that we ever have with this type of restriction. But that is in a perfect world, and we all know that we don't live in a perfect world. In contrast, liberal states and circuit courts have actively chosen not to apply that test as outlined in Heller. Instead, they use the invalid interest balancing test. One thing to note with this type of test is that Justice Breyer and Heller advocated for this type of interest balancing test in his dissent, but that was rejected by the majority. Currently, there are multiple states which have bans on so-called assault weapons, and those bans are being challenged in courts. For example, Miller v. Bonta and Rupp v. Bonta are two cases in the Ninth Circuit, which challenged the state of California's ban on so-called assault weapons. There's also the Bianchi v. Frosch case, 
which is currently seeking Supreme Court review. That case, Bianchi challenges Maryland's ban on so-called assault weapons. In both the Ninth Circuit and the Fourth Circuit, the courts are using an interest balancing test. They've refused to actually use the type of test outlined by Scalia and Heller. In a recent case, Duncan v. Bonta, the Ninth Circuit found that although magazines were protected arms, again, important, they found that magazines were actually protected under the Second Amendment, that they were the type of arm that was in common use for lawful purposes, but they still found the ban on their possession as valid. The Ninth Circuit found that California has a substantial interest in reducing mass casualties and that a ban on magazines that hold more than 10 rounds would meet that interest, although it wouldn't be a perfect fit. That type of analysis is a far cry from the type of analysis that was outlined in Heller, and that's why I said in a perfect world, the Heller test would actually resolve this issue outright. But what the issue is in the real world, what's going on right now in the courts is that lower courts like the Ninth Circuit and Fourth Circuit and Seventh Circuit and all these other circuits are refusing to actually use that analysis. So that begs the question, did the ATF make a huge blunder? Well, my answer is yes and no. Lower courts like the Ninth Circuit and others have held various things like magazines and handguns and rifles as protected arms. They said that they are in common use for lawful purposes, yet they still uphold the categorical bans on them. Even more so, sometimes these lower courts try to say, yes, these are protected arms, but the ban is not an outright or categorical ban. And it's not a ban on possession because you could still register the rifle or you could still have some sort of variant of the firearm or the item. Or for example, in Duncan, they said, well, you could still have magazines that hold 10 rounds. You have some sort of magazine. So it's not an outright ban. So there are ways lower courts get around this, even though sometimes they directly themselves concede that these magazines or these rifles or whatever actually protected arms in common use for lawful purposes by law-abiding citizens in the US. Now, where this does get sticky for the ATF is if the Supreme Court decides that it wants to take up a ban like in the Bianchi case. Lower courts may be applying a different test, but the Supreme Court in its current makeup is much more likely to find that these types of bans are invalid. And with the ATF's admission that the AR-15 is clearly in common use for lawful purposes and is one of the most common firearms out there on the market, the only question after that, after that concession, is whether or not the state is actually banning that item. Is it a categorical ban? Which, in my opinion, Maryland's is. It is a ban on this type of firearm. Therefore, the Supreme Court should, in a perfect world, have a holding that the ban is indeed unconstitutional and it should be the end of the inquiry right then and there. As of right now, whether or not the Supreme Court will take up an assault weapons ban case is kind of up in the air. What will likely happen is that the amicus briefs in the Bianchi case, or maybe even the reply in the Bianchi case, will reference the ATF admission and it will provide it as proof that these types of rifles are in common use for lawful purposes and that a ban on them is unconstitutional. But will the ATF admission streamline any of these cases? My opinion is that no, it won't. In my opinion, this will really have major impact only if the Supreme Court takes up a case like Bianchi. Then the ATF will be really in trouble because of their own admission. And it will go a long way to actually support that under the true analysis as outlined in Heller, a ban like this must be struck down. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm or fuel Algor's rhythm. It adds fuel to his jet and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. Again, I want to thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys are directly impacting these videos, impacting this channel, and helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. So thank you so much for all your support. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, this nation was built by armed scholars and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.